I hope you have the book with the picture of the camel with the wrinkled knees on the cover. You do? Good. When you hear this sound, please turn the page. Remember, this sound tells you to turn the page. Now, please turn the page to the beginning of the story. Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy had gone into the deep, deep woods to look for the big pumpkin. Suddenly, they heard a funny sort of whistling sound. Do you think that could be the big pumpkin? whispered Raggedy Ann. A somewhat scared Raggedy Andy gulped and whispered back that he didn't know. But he called out, Come on! Come out, whoever you are! Come on out! We're not going to hurt you! And out came a... a, Well, for a moment, Raggedy Andy wasn't quite sure what it was. He didn't think it was the big pumpkin. It wasn't round, and it wasn't orange. He took another look. It was a camel. But such a camel you never have seen before. It was wrinkled and crinkled, and it was blue. Raggedy Andy took just one more quick look. Then, with a flying leap, he grabbed the camel's neck. With Andy hanging on his neck, the camel just plopped to the ground. How would he ever get up? But Raggedy Ann pulled and Raggedy Andy pushed. And at last, the camel with the wrinkled knees, for that was indeed his name, was standing upright. Well, almost upright. The camel sighed and thanked the Raggedies. He told them that the trouble was his legs just weren't as good as they once were. Once they had good straight sticks inside them. You should have seen me then, he told them. But I've been played with so much by so many little children that I have lumps where no camel should ever have lumps. And my knees are all wrinkly and baggy. That's why I was trying to catch them. Trying to catch who? Raggedy Andy interrupted the camel. Why, those camels in the sky, the camel with the wrinkled knees replied. I've been chasing them for ever so long. If only I could catch up with them, think how happy I would be. Then I'd have friends, and they probably wouldn't mind my wrinkles. And the poor camel heaved another sigh. The raggedies looked at each other. Maybe the camel would like to help them look for the big pumpkin. At least that would take his mind off his troubles. The camel thought that that sounded absolutely wonderful. Climb on my back, he told them. I can still run pretty fast. And with that, Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy climbed up on the camel's back, and off they went. They hadn't gone very far when off in the distance they saw it. They caught just a peek through the trees. Raggedy Andy whispered to the camel to go faster, or they would never catch up. The camel took another look at the round orange ball that seemed to glow in the distance. He wasn't so sure he wanted to catch up. But he didn't want to disappoint his new friends, so he did try to hurry. If only his legs wouldn't sag so. They first went in one direction and then in another. Bumpity, bumpity, bump. Thud. 
Oh, groaned the camel with the wrinkled knees. Where are we? What? exclaimed the surprised raggedies. We're right back home. And, and if that's a big pumpkin, well, then it's right in the playroom where we live. And they hurried toward the house. But before they could reach the tree outside the playroom window, which is the way they had both gotten out of the playroom in the first place, they saw Marcella. And plop, they dropped in a heap and stayed there. For, of course, they could never let any human, not even Marcella, see that they could walk and talk. What are you two doing out here? Marcella cried in amazement. Why, Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy, why aren't you in the house? And she carried them back into the playroom. The camel with the wrinkled knees stared after them, only his head poking out from the piles of autumn leaves that covered him. he cried as soon as Marcella was out of sight. Wait for me! Hey, wait for me! The camel called, but no one seemed to hear him. Back in the playroom, Marcella told the raggedies that they had almost missed seeing the big pumpkin her daddy had made for her. Isn't it the most wonderful jack-o'-lantern you've ever seen? And with that, Marcella put the raggedies on the window seat with the other dolls. Just then, Marcella's mother called to her that dinner was ready. Marcella left the playroom. The door had barely closed when the two raggedies anxiously looked out the window. They wanted to see what had become of the camel. Then they saw him. They could scarcely believe their eyes. Because his legs were so saggy, they would bend the way straight legs never could. He was able to climb up the tree that was right outside the playroom window. The raggedies hurried to open the playroom window. All the dolls helped. And in a moment, the camel fell through the window and onto the playroom window seat. Happily, Raggedy Andy introduced him to everyone. This is our friend, the camel, with the wrinkled knees, Raggedy Andy told all the dolls. And they all smiled a warm welcome. Soon, everyone was laughing and joking. In fact, they laughed so much, they almost didn't hear Marcella return to the playroom. Why, where did you come from? Marcella said as she picked up the camel. Welcome to the playroom, Mr. Camel. As she hugged him, Marcella told the camel that she knew someone had once loved him a whole lot and that now she and all the dolls would love him too. Still holding the camel, Marcella picked up Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. She hugged all three of them before she put them back on the window seat. And as she did, and just for a tiny moment, she thought she heard... Three small, happy sighs.